And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 128, So you have these hypocrites who are disrespecting the Prophet. They're turning away from the Prophet. Allah is, in this verse, He's saying, why are you turning away from the Prophet? Why do you turn away from a man? That a messenger has indeed come to you from among your own. That this is not a person who has come from a foreign land. He understands your problems. He understands your culture. He has a nuanced understanding of your of the challenges that you face. He's one of you. Why do you turn away from him? Allah says that he is troubled by what you suffer. You know, look at how compassionate the Prophet is. That he feels pain when you suffer. He empathizes with you. He, he actually cares about you. When you suffer, it actually hurts him more than when he suffers. You know, if, if he was given a choice between seeing his followers suffer and persecuted, and he himself enduring that persecution, he would rather endure the persecution and protect his followers. Azizun alayhima alatum harisun alaykum. You know, the word hirs in the Arabic language usually has negative connotations. You know, someone who's very greedy is called haris. You know, but here it's not used in a negative uh, in a negative uh, in a negative way. And I'll, I'll I'll give you I'll try to illustrate to you what Allah is trying to say when He says haris. Haris means to be very protective of something. You know, if you can imagine, imagine that there's a couple. Who, you know, they've been trying to have kids for many years. Two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen years go by, and they're finally able to have a child. Can you imagine how protective those parents are going to be over that child? That they went through so much hardship, that this child is very precious to them. So they become very protective over that child. The Prophet ﷺ is even more protective over us than those parents. Because he cares about us. Because he loves us. He wants what is best for us. Harisun alaykum. And he's like that with everybody. It's not just with the believers, because Allah at the end of the verse, He speaks about how He deals with believers. Azizun alayhima anittum harisun alaykum. This is with everybody. This is how the Prophet feels towards all people. He wants what's best for them. It hurts the Prophet to see, you know, Abu Lahab prostrating to an idol. It hurts the Prophet to see people living. You know, lives that are devoid of any spirituality. He used to feel pain when you would see them. Harisun alaykum bil mu'minina ra'ufur rahim. And the Prophet was especially kind and merciful towards the believers. Now, how was he especially kind and merciful towards the believers? There are many examples, but one example, you know, for those who are interested in reading the verse. In Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 53, Surah 33, verse 53, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, just to give you an idea of how kind the Prophet was and how he just never wanted to hurt anyone's feelings, Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena aminu la tadkhulu buyuta al-nabi illa an yu'dhana lakum ila ta'amin ghayra nadhirina ina. O you who believe, Allah says, do not enter the houses of the Prophet, do not enter the house of the Prophet until permission has been granted. Now why would Allah reveal a verse like this? It's because people used to walk in the Prophet's house without seeking permission. You know, that's how approachable he was. That's how down to earth he was. That people felt so close to the Prophet that the Prophet made them feel like they were family. And they used to walk into his house without even asking for permission. Because they felt that the house of Rasulullah is our house. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh, you who believe, do not enter the house of the Prophet until permission has been given to you. And when permission is given to you, and you know, and if the Prophet invites you to a meal, don't show up early. You know, some of them they would they the Prophet would invite them for a meal, and they were so eager to see the Prophet, they would come early and they would sit and they would wait for the Prophet to prepare the meal. Allah says, Don't go too early and wait for the meal to be prepared. When you're given permission to enter, enter. When you eat, after you eat your meal, disperse, leave. Because what would happen is when they would have a meal with the Prophet, what did they want to do? They wanted to sit around and chat with the Prophet. They enjoyed his company so much that even after they finished their meal, they wanted to converse with the Prophet. And these conversations wouldn't last for 10, 15 minutes, hours. Can you imagine the Prophet ﷺ with his family obligations, with you know the you know the the burden of guiding humanity on his shoulders, all of the different duties and roles that he has to play? Many of the companions they would spend hours late into the middle of the night, they would just be sitting with the Prophet. That used to they used to hurt the Prophet, used to inconvenience him. But Allah says, all of those days, those nights where you guys used to sit with the Prophet for hours and hours and hours, and it would inconvenience the Prophet, he wouldn't say anything to you because he was too shy. Can you imagine someone with the amount of power the Prophet had? You know, these are people that would give their lives if the Prophet told them to do so. He was too shy to tell them to leave. But Allah is not shy to tell you the truth. This was how the Prophet was with the believers. He was so kind and so merciful. And then Allah ends in ayah number 129. But if they turn away, meaning, if those hypocrites, if those people decide to turn away from you, Ya Rasulullah, say, God suffices me. There is no God but He. In Him do I trust, and He is the Lord of the mighty throne. Allah tells the Prophet that, Ya Rasulullah, you, you know, it doesn't matter if they turn away from you. You're not in it to, to gain followers. That as long as you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's all that you need. Let them turn away because Allah is sufficient for you. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you, you have a majority. Even if the entire world turns away from you, and this is something that, that we have to train ourselves. You know, sometimes we get discouraged when, uh, when things don't go according to plan, when, uh, you know, sometimes when we start programs and attendance starts to dwindle and we come demoralized if you're doing it for the sake of allah that shouldn't discourage you you know whenever whenever we feel that you know we're not hitting the numbers that we're that we're seeking that we're not getting the the uh, the optimal attendance we're not getting maximum participation if you're doing work for the sake of allah you don't need a lot of people hasbi allah that God is sufficient for me and He is the best of supporters. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to guide us and bless us and illuminate our hearts with the teachings of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin.